Flash with Ripple Through is an excellent tool for intersection design. Many engineering software packages are unable to represent the complex shape of the pavement through intersections. Uh, in this segment, we will demonstrate the use of invisible geometries within Splash to accurately represent the shape of the pavement surface. Now, let's start by triangulating this design of this intersection and take a look at the result, the default result. Now, by the way, uh, we're not just triangulating this little piece of uh, pavement we're looking at. We're running the whole, the whole road, which is, goes off the sheet and on, as you've seen in some other demonstrations. Now, we'll, uh, let's take a look at one, t I like to look at tenth of a foot contours, because I really get a, a feel for the shape when I'm looking at tenth of a foot contours. Now, right in the here, we see that, well, let's clear the triangles out and just look at the contours. Now, I'm going to window up in here. We see in this inner, this side of the road looks pretty good on this lane, but as we come through here and we start to get wide, our, our contours look funny. Uh, the reason our contours look funny is because our, our triangles are not representing what's real, what we really want to go on through this intersection. So, the, if you look at the triangles, they, they seem to look good, but it's really not it's really not what we want. We don't really want to interpolate from here over to here, normal to that, normal to that, uh, that fillet, or that turnout. So let's use a special geometry. I'm going to clear this. Let's use a special geometry, and this is a little bit complex. So I'm going to select. This is my parent. Now I'm going to create a child alignment. Well, not yet. Okay, looking at our contours again, I see that the problem seems to be from about halfway through this arc down to where the arc ends, and the contours start looking pretty good. So let's use our question mark and find out what the station is right about here. Now we see that that's station 42. Okay, and then we'll move this off a little bit. Then we'll look and see what the station is down around here. Uh, that's 74. Okay, let's run a little piece of uh, invisible geometry from station 40 to station, uh, I mean from station 45 to station 70. So we'll use our markers system and we'll mark a station. So we'll mark a station at station 45 that's, that's marking 45 feet, well, V station 45. And now we'll mark station uh, 70. Okay, now we're going to create a quick offset. And what I want to do is I'm going to go horizontally 45 feet over. That'll, that'll put us squarely off off the street and uh, just go over uh, on a zero vertical difference. Uh, I want, I'm going to call this uh, smooth. And we'll make it a member of surface one. Now this, we're working on surface one. Okay. And I want to put that child alignment from this marker to this marker. Now, it's gone off my screen. There. Now, looking at the attributes of this child, one thing I want to do is make it invisible. I also want to retain the normals. Now, I would like to use I think I'll use uh, two foot normals to really get some accuracy going across that pavement. Now what, what you're looking at is we're looking at lines of geometry 
that are normal to the center of this road going out and, and hitting the uh, the turnout. Whereas before we saw our triangles were going normal, wanted to go normal to that to that uh, turnout. So let's see. Uh, it's invisible. We have our normals on. They're two feet. Uh, it is a member of our surface. Okay. Now, we'll use a tool I'm not sure you've seen in the demo yet. You may or may not have, depending on which demos you've watched. We're going to establish a limit on this child. Now, we're going to use, we can have a hard limit, soft limit, tracking limits. We're going to use a soft limit. And rather than use the elevation of the child, which would be a zero vertical difference from its parent, in our case, the way we established it, we'll use the elevation of the limit. And what that means is, is that it will form a slope from the center of this road out to the, our limit's going, we're going to click in a second, this, this turnout. So it's going to go to that uh, lip of gutter, or edge of pavement, and compute a slope along every one of these lines. Now I'm using a ratio of 9 tenths. I'll show you the effect. Every one of these normals only goes nine-tenths of the way over to the turnout. I don't want it to go all the way to the turnout because I don't want two alignments on top of each other interfering with triangulation. Now, let's see what our effect is on our triangulation. So, we'll re-triangulate this surface. And you'll notice as it triangulates this patch of triangles that it's put in place, which will help our contours dramatically. Now, we're not really trying to improve our contours. Uh, we're actually trying to improve the actual representation of the surface. And the contours are simply a byproduct of that surface shape. Now, let's look at the contours. And we see they're greatly improved. Now, clear everything redraw, and let's also quit looking at this. I'm going to do something to make this invisible geometry no longer selected. Okay, now we're not, it's there, but it's not selected for edit, so we're not seeing it, nor will it plot. So, now, all of a sudden, we look at our contours, and the contours through here are greatly improved. However, these are kind of uh, jagged looking. We window up a little bit more on these. I don't like these contours at all. So, uh, let's look at our triangles. What we have is sort of long, skinny triangles being formed along here. So, we can further improve the looks of this intersection, uh, or... As I say, we're not really trying to improve our contours. We're really trying to make sure we're accurately representing the shape of the pavement in three dimensions. Let's triangulate it again. And we still have our invisible geometry in place. So we'll triangulate it again. And we'll, for one thing, we'll, let's, let's improve our sample increment. We'll increase it to five feet instead of ten feet. And let's insert smoothing points. Now it says it can be slow, so bear with me. it take a little bit longer when it does in smoothing points. Now, of course, as I said, it's triangulating this entire project. Here it comes. Now, let's take a look at what it produced. A beautiful set of contours. Now... And I say that in terms of it being a realistic representation of the way that water is going to flow on that pavement. 